Hey there, horror movie tea sippers. The following podcast will contain spoilers for the movie we are about to review. If you have not seen the movie and do not wish to have anything ruined prematurely, then please do not continue to listen until after you have seen the movie. And welcome to the Horror Movie Tea Podcast. Today we are covering a request. Thank you, Brady, again for requesting a movie. Uh, we are covering Overlord. It was released in 2018. But before we go to the summary, let's go on to tea. Uh, what tea are you drinking today? I am drinking Brutalities Back in Blackberry. One of my Ooh. favorites from them. I'm going to need to try that. It's warm and tasty and caffeinated, and it makes me happy. <laughs> Caffeination is good. <laughs> <laughs> makes my soul very happy. <laughs> Uh, I am also drinking Brutalities, but I am drinking the Malloween one. So That's a tasty one. It has almost like a smoky flavor to that one. <gasps> Funny story about that. So I was, I am extremely paranoid about there being a dryer fire. Because, yeah, clean your vents, people. Clean your vents. But anyways, <laughs> only you can prevent a dryer fire. But anyways, <laughs> but I was passing my dryer while holding the tea. And I'm like, I smell something burning. And I'm like, wait a minute. Like, calm, calm down. Just sniff without the tea in your nose vicinity. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's nothing. And I sniff the tea. I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> It's the tea. It's the tea. And it's it's so funny because like I went to close the door and I keep smelling the burning smell. So my like instinct is to be like, ah, there's a fire. <laughs> but I'm like, no, it's the tea. This is supposed to smell like this. <laughs> so yep. Yep. So yeah, for anxiety. Summary. <laughs> yes. So the summary is uh, the setting is World War II and it is um, right before D-Day. And the objective of these soldiers is to go down into France, where the Germans are still occupying, and take down this uh, tower, which will allow the, the aircrafts and a larger military force to come down and take over the region. Um, so they parachute off, and it's pretty normal until they go into the tower and they find out that there has been a lot of human experimentation. But they end up blowing up the tower and the lab. And everything ends happy. So, entertainment. Minus the mass casualties from everything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. the On the German side, at least. And American side at the very beginning. This is World War II. Well, There's well yes. all around. Yeah, well, but they they went in knowing that it was going to be pretty rough. But yeah, it was the beginning of the movie. My God. But anyways, entertainment. Just trying to stay focused here, guys. <laughs> I will say that offhand, this normally isn't my go-to movie, but I did enjoy it more than I thought I would. I felt like their take on the horror of the... German experiments was an interesting take where they were trying to create super soldiers, which you hear a lot in a, other movies that try and do similar things, but they were specifically also experimenting on enemies to try and perfect the formula. But the one thing that this movie I think does extremely well is giving you likable characters. They have characters that are very hateable. But I guess the kind of ironic thing about that is some of the American characters you really don't like. At least specifically in the beginning when you see how like rough they are. Chloe and Boyce, they're the more main characters, but they were by far my favorite characters. Because they actually had empathy and had more dynamic than, oh, I'm just going to be an asshole and... That's my personality because I'm a soldier and I got to beat people up. It's just, I don't know. That was kind of 
ridiculous. But so I would probably give this movie probably a six just because I may watch it like one more time, but it will be like a while from now and it's not really going to be my go-to movie. It's like if someone asks like, oh, what did you think about the movie? I'd be like, eh, it's, it's okay. You know, it's not really classic material, but it's not a bad movie by any means. Yeah, if if I had to give it like a school base grade, I'd give it like a B minus. I think a six is fair on one to ten. It's it's a all right movie. It's not the first one that I'd watch, but if it was on, I'd be okay watching it. It'd be one that I might do stuff as well, like you know, cooking or mm, kitchen, yeah, or laundry yeah. or whatever. Something that I'm not necessarily paying full attention to the movie. Kind of have it on in the background. It does have, especially for the first time viewing, it does have a good sense of urgency. They say very, very clear there's a deadline to be able to do this. If this does not get done, pretty much all of our soldiers coming in to this wave is going to be wiped out. And it's all going to be on us. (laughs) So we have to get this done no matter what. Yeah. And they keep reminding you of the time every so often, you know, be back here, oh, 0300. We need to get this done. We have 20 minutes from now. I'm setting the charges for 18 minutes. If we're still here, anyone still here is not going to be here anymore. <laughs> Things are going to go boom. So they do it in kind of a subtle way. But it does remind you there's a very, very clear deadline and there's a very real sense of urgency. Yeah. With real consequences. So I think that was really well done. The monsters, we'll get into this with the realism more, but I feel like they were a little inconsistent with it. But it wasn't a bad movie, but it wasn't like top tier either. Yeah. Yeah, but I do agree they did the intensity of it pretty well. Like, you you were witnessing my... I was like, go, go, go! Because <laughs> I wanted Boyce to live so bad. Because of all the soldiers, he is my favorite. He was the softest. <laughs> yeah. Overall, there's nothing outwardly wrong that I feel like they did with the movie. It's just like whether or not it's your type of movie. But I wish maybe there's a little bit more... I don't know. It's interesting because I feel like the amount of dynamic that they had with just the main characters, but then like leaving the the other characters more like your stereotypical type of villains and stuff that worked towards the movie's benefit versus if they had like a bunch of dynamics and stuff like that. But I still, I don't know. You guys can uh, let us know in the comments, but I had a lot of trouble liking any of the other characters like voice and chloe but then my next favorite character was the photographer until he yes chase thank you until he mutated (laughs) and got his brain stamped out well and the problem is a lot of the really likable characters were shown in the beginning and they died very very quickly in very horrible ways so (laughs) You you almost are taught not to get too attached to the characters. You're kind of afraid to get attached to the characters because you're like, no, they're going to die. Yeah. <laughs> if I like them, they're going to die. I know like uh, Ford, definitely towards the end, he, he kind of redeemed himself. His whole like, oh, they play dirty, so we have to play dirty too. Like that kind of... I feel like he was more battle hard. Yeah. And a bit world jaded. Yeah. He'd seen some shit. (laughs) Yeah, but he definitely redeemed himself at the end. And then, I forgot, the guy that's like a jerk during the whole movie, like he has a comment for everything. First class, Lyle, I don't know his last name. It's not showing his full last name. But anyways, that... It was Tibbet. Tibbet, okay. Like... In the first two thirds, I'm like, please kill him off first. Like, <laughs> I want him gone. And but I feel like he is a jerk, but I feel like that's just, he's so extra. 
Yeah. Like he's, well, he's got a very big personality and he's very rough around the edges and very gruff and all. But that's just his personality type, I feel like. Well, what I was trying to what I was trying to make a point to is uh is towards the end whenever he's kind of playing around with the kid, I feel like he does grow a little bit to where instead of just being a complete and utter dick to the kid, he is just being more playful with it. So, yeah. Well, I feel like half the time he didn't want to get close to anyone because this is war and they don't know how long they're going to be there. And he's kind of a liability. That's fair. (laughs) I mean, he got shot because of the kid. (laughs) Yeah. But at the same time, he's a kid and he's just trying to, to interact with them and, and play with them and all. So, I mean, it's like an annoying kid brother, you know? <laughs> like, he does like the kid. He just doesn't want to like the kid. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, I don't know. Very much New Yorker type. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, I don't really, there's, I don't really have much else to say on the entertainment. It's more the realism that I have a lot to say. But they, it it had some exciting moments. It had some intense moments. It had some decent comedy. Um, it does have a lot of gore, which from the other gory movies we've watched, you guys probably know that I am not into gore. So there was a lot of times I was like, ew, ew, ew. <laughs> no, yeah. those are more for me. <laughs> <laughs> which, like, I'll, I'll, you know, I have nothing against gory movies. I'll watch them, but that doesn't mean that I'm not going to make ewy noises <laughs> while I'm watching it. Which makes it all the better for me, guys. <laughs> Please keep recommending those. They're great. No! <laughs> It was pretty funny though, because the um, the German guy, I think, I forgot what his uh, name Waffner, or is it Waffner? Because he's German. But anyways, <laughs> uh, if pronounced it Waffner. We're gonna say Waffner. Okay, but um, whenever he's getting uh, stabbed and they're like twisting the knife, I love how I'm the one that's like. Uh, like I am feeling the pain in my leg. Like I feel it. Like I think he totally deserves it, but I feel the pain and I don't like it. And then you're so you're cringing, and I'm just like, do it higher. <laughs> you're like another. Yeah. <laughs> Take out higher twist. <laughs> but then it was actually kind of funny because we started talking about like where the best place in that area to stab and we're like the groin because it it's extremely painful and it bleeds so profusely and then my depends on what you're wanting to do if you want them to die painfully yes that is a way to do it if you're trying to get information that's a horrible way because they'll bleed out too fast well, but you can always do only a little bit of lacerations to where there's a lot of blood. But yes, yes. If you're trying to keep them... There's way too many arteries and all that. Yeah. That's a dangerous place to play around with. But anyways, so we're, we're having this conversation. I just hear my husband is from the hall going, ugh. <laughs> Thankfully, my husband was already gone. <laughs> He's helping with the the efforts from the snowpocalypse because at the time of this recording, this is just after all of the snowpocalypse in Texas. So yeah. many pipes burst and things like that. So he's helping some some family recover from that today. But yeah. thankfully, he was already <laughs> gone <laughs> during this whole discussion because you probably think I'm more of a psycho than he already believes me to be. Yeah. See, like I normally don't talk about gruesome stuff um i th- oh, like you're i have full discussions <laughs> see you are the only person i guess v2 that i like have gruesome discussions with so it's like whenever steven overhears it he just is kind of concerned and just kind of double like is kind of going through his head and be like who did i really marry like <laughs> did i marry a psycho i just love my husband all the more for this he and i have full on discussions on some of these things <laughs> he's not really big into horror movies but he does like action movies 
and we'll watch them and all, and we'll have full on discussions of how they could have done that better <laughs> and how they could have gotten the information that much sooner <laughs> <laughs> or, or like the, the home alone type movies with all the traps and things We're like, Oh no, they should have done this. <laughs> Or the prank movies? Oh, no. No, what they need to do is this. See? <laughs> so I married a psycho that matches mine. <laughs> and it's great. His psycho matches mine. <laughs> it's funny because, like, Stephen likes action movies, but he is used to, like, James Bond, which, you know, not very bloody at all. But then, so whenever we were... So hard. Whenever we watched uh, all three of the John Wick movies, every single time, and we always watched them together... Every time there'd be a bloody scene, we both would be like, eh. <laughs> like, we enjoyed those movies so much, but we're both, like, ewing. <laughs> Meanwhile, Chris and I are like, yes! <laughs> the only complaint that I have is they didn't kill the guy that killed the dog slow enough. <laughs> but we are getting a little off topic, but hopefully that's a fun little side note for you guys. Yeah. <laughs> Well, see the differences in our psychosis. Yeah. <laughs> and but um, as per usual, I will start us off because I know I am not thinking of as nearly as many things as you probably are. Um, the, there's it, it's mainly the the mutations and how the experiments and stuff are that is my main complaint as far as like. Well, and then another huge complaint is how noisy the freaking soldiers are. Like, they are hiding in a house, and they are yelling at each other, and I'm like, what are you doing? Like, it's a miracle that it took gunshots to alert the stupid German soldiers, because the... Like, they're patrolling, yeah. and they can just go into your house and... Mass numbers. There's a whole bunch of them patrolling. Yeah. Yeah. And then on the mutation stuff, it's more like, how can a serum essentially redo your skeletal structure? And um, and then, like, the one where they had, like, the woman's head and then her skeleton is like, mm, you don't really see her hooked up to a lot of other things that would make that even plausible. So I'm going to give this movie, oh, this is tough because it's like the medical stuff really drags it down. But then the other, well, the soldiers kind of suck, though. <laughs> like, they just kind of suck at being soldiers. Um, I think I'm going to give it a three. I think it, that's pretty this fair. Movie, yeah, this movie is really difficult to gauge because I feel like their personality types, the various, it's so varied and so different, but that that's very realistic to me. They had people from all walks of life that were volunteering and drafted yeah. into it. So that really was very accurate for me and their interactions and all, and them just sniping at each other like brothers. Yeah. <laughs> like that, yeah. that was very realistic and, and really immersive. And I appreciated that. Yeah. Um, the, the sister Chloe's reactions and her protectiveness to her brother and even to her aunt, I definitely understand and can definitely see that being very realistic. Yeah. Also, her scavenging is kind of a an F you <laughs> to the Germans in a way. And even the grossness of Waffner um, having a quote unquote arrangement with Chloe. She was probably the, the best looking in the, the village. And I can kind of see that grossness going on. It was a way for her to protect her brother and her aunt. Yeah. And it sucks, but in those situations, there aren't really any good options. Yeah. And that was just, she was doing the best she could with what she had. Yeah. Until the soldiers came along and then she's like, ha ha, better option. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like she, she was constantly fighting even oh, yeah. during the times that I'm sure the uh, Waffner thought that he had control over her. She was rebelling any way she could, as safely as she could, but any way that she could. 
Yeah, and that whole dynamic too, like, unfortunately in history, we found time and time again, if there's someone in power, they they often abuse that power. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, and, yep. Very, very common, unfortunately. So, that was realistic. I feel like a lot of the fight scenes were pretty realistic. I am still annoyed that no one ever seems to do headshots, ever. Yes! It's like, though, to be fair, Chloe did put three bullets into one of the zombie monster dude's head. In one of the German the bottom. And you do see a giant gaping hole out the top, middle, kind of back of the skull mm-hmm. with blood every now and then just eking out. <laughs> but it didn't stop him <laughs> until she got the flamethrower, which she was the <laughs> smart one. What I don't count as smart is she then takes the flamethrower off. Take it with you. <laughs> Heck, take the second one with you. Yeah, that one's gonna Three need it. <laughs> Who wants one? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, But otherwise, I feel like they were very inconsistent about what will and won't kill the creatures. So I did take some points off there because in with Chase, when he turned, I mean, <laughs> kind of destroyed the head utterly. <laughs> There's nothing left. But if you put three bullets point blank into it, that doesn't stop them. That doesn't really make that much sense. Either destroying the brain does work or it doesn't. Pick yeah. one. <laughs> well, maybe it's just like the amount of the brain that is destroyed. I feel like that was a pretty damn good amount of the brain. When you uh, see yeah. the hole when he turns, that was a pretty damn good <laughs> amount of the brain. Yeah. So I don't. I feel like they were a little inconsistent with that. It does up the the oh crap factor. Yeah. <laughs> but they're very inconsistent with it. And certain times when they were like moving the bodies and how much was missing from certain ones. I feel like even with a serum that that revives you, you still need motor function and all. And I feel like If their heart is still pumping, like when it revives you, because they're clearly still bleeding, they still have a pulse because blood is every now and then spewing out of arteries and stuff (laughs) in the guy's head. So (laughs) once you run out of blood, can't really move because the muscles need oxygen and things from the blood to be able to function. So we can only suspend reality for so much. The head from that woman that you mentioned earlier in the lab. Yeah. She was also missing a lot of where the vocal cords were. Yeah. So she wouldn't have been able to actually talk. Yeah. You need need the little flaps in your throat. That's how that works. Well, even if the vocal cords were there, where they attach was not. Yeah. (laughs) So, no, Mm. this is not how it do. Yeah, because it's like you need a way to like the whole point of the lungs is it's almost like a bag that like pushes a compressed air and that flaps your vocal cords. So it's like if there is no bag to push the air, then it doesn't do anything. You can't do the thing. <laughs> the body does not function this way. It is very creepy. Yeah. And it definitely messes with the guy's head, which I, yeah. Yeah. I'd have some concerns as well, but um, not how that's that works. not how that works. Yeah. <laughs> that's not how any of this works. So it just certain things they did really, really well with their interactions and the fight scenes and things like that. Them running out of ammo was good. That's very realistic. And that makes sense. Why they drop certain things or why they don't loot certain bodies. For more ammo or weapons or grenades drives me up the wall with any movie we see this in. Yeah. Well, and then going back to the the headshots, like, I can understand if you're far away, 
You know, yes. you're supposed to aim for the largest target, which would be the chest. I get it. But if you are like within 10 feet, maybe like 25 feet, I don't know, to, within that range. Well, and they were well within 10 you feet. Shoot the head. Shoot yeah. the head. Well, I'm sorry, but if you've already shot them in the body, in the torso, <laughs> seven times and they haven't gone down, <laughs> try something else. That is literally the definition of insanity. <laughs> Is doing the same thing over and over, expecting different results. Clearly, body shots are not working. Try something else. What else is vital? Oh, maybe the brain. (laughs) Yeah. Do something. (laughs) Yeah. Every time, guys. You should hear us during some of these movies. That was by far the most frustrating part. (laughs) Isn't working. Do something else. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, like luckily those parts don't happen too often in the movie, but they are frustrating when they do happen. Oh, they happen more often than they should. Because even (laughs) even after the first guy, they still try to do it with other ones that they encounter. Sweetie, it didn't work on your buddy. It's not going to work on them. (laughs) Stop it. (laughs) So, I don't know. I give this movie maybe a three for realism. The the other things just bring it down too much. It's yeah. If it was just like a a regular war movie, I feel like they would have done really, really, really well, and they would have scored much, much higher on the realism scale. Oh yeah. But with those other things, you're just like, no, <laughs> that's not how any of this works. And I feel like a soldier, at the very least, would be like, retain the information. Body shots don't work yeah if you want to even if you're wanting to just slow them down shoot out the legs yeah kneecap them then get the head yeah don't just try body shots that that makes them flinch for all of a second and then they keep coming stop it (sighs) yeah it's like if you need more time to be able to aim for the head, then incapacitate them and then go right up to them and boom, headshot. <laughs> well, and this is the kind of crap that they train for for weeks. Yeah. You've got to be, you can't tell me that they're that bad of a shot, <laughs> that they can't aim and shoot at the head. And some of these are like full automatic. I mean, even if you just go in a line at the level of the head, you're going to hit it at least once. (laughs) Yeah. Come on. That's fair. So just. (laughs) The one thing going, continuing on the realism scale, you know, because it was set in World War II, as far as I could tell, it looked like the looks of everything was pretty authentic. But I would be really curious for someone who is a gun historian or a weapon historian did did the weapons that they use or the uniforms that they use were they historically accurate or did they literally were were like oh this looks like this would probably fit the time period to be perfectly honest i wasn't going to even include that in the thing because i have no idea (laughs) yeah i have no idea either as far as i could tell it looks like it was pretty spot on and they even mentioned it's like this is a two-person gun (laughs) and there were a lot of those types of weapons at that time but i just don't know i i do kind of want to call a little bit of bull when he stands up and uses it because that particular caliber of gun i feel like would have a lot more kickback than it looked like yeah but that's most movies like you very rarely see any much of any recoil when they use guns yeah that's fair oh but i'm still counting it (laughs) (laughs) yeah it definitely isn't as realistic (laughs) if it's supposed to like (laughs) blow you three feet (laughs) yeah well then i've also heard that like leaning it on your shoulder actually isn't the best of ideas because it just kind of like you can like dislocate your shoulder by doing that. It depends. it depends on the weapon. It really depends on the gun. There are some that you like need it planted on the ground. <laughs> yeah, like snipers. Yes. <laughs> but anyway, do you have anything else for the the scales? No, it's like we could literally like nitpick this movie as far as the realism goes. The entertainment but <laughs> it, 
it wasn't quite our cup of tea. It wasn't the first time I've seen this movie, so I knew what to expect and everything, which which did make it a little better to be able to watch her reaction. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I have I hadn't even heard of this movie. So I went in with a blank slate. <laughs> like, it's so funny because I'm like, okay, World War II. I'm like, what is this movie about? Is there going to be not like, I'm so excited. I'm like, please let there be Nazi zombies. No, it wasn't Nazi zombies. But, you know, I'm not. I mean, they kind of did a little bit. Kind of. I wasn't disappointed, though. It was still a good movie. It was all right. <laughs> yeah. But thank you, Brady, again for the request. And you guys, you know, if you want to request a movie, you are free to either shoot us an email or send us a comment on social media. And don't forget, please follow us on our social media and also subscribe onto YouTube. Like liking our videos, sharing our content that really goes a million miles in helping our content get out there. It's like we're starting to ramp up a little bit. We're starting to get more people, but we're not quite there. But we're so close. We're right at the cusp, guys. Like if even if like 50% of the people just like liked and shared, it would make such a huge impact. And we want you guys to be able to have a community that you can go to and we can all have these really weird discussion so please if if you like our content please like subscribe and share and don't forget we're not just reviewing movies and things we do have a live stream for horror games on the first weekend of every month so if you are interested in those as well watching us freak out and be chickens <laughs> those are always fun. they're on the first saturday of every month at 7 p.m on Twitch, there is a chat that you can interact with us as well. We do mention the comments that we see in the chat and respond to those as well. And we're we're working on being able to to put it up on the screen for for later viewing as well. <laughs> for yes. when we upload the the live stream and parts on YouTube. Yes. So please don't forget to join us on those as well. And if y'all have any challenges for some of those, we have done a few of those for like the previous live stream for Phasmophobia. Those are always fun. Yeah. Yeah, they are. So. <laughs> In the meantime, guys, if you have any other movies or things that you want us to review, please let us know. It is still a little bit crazy out here in Texas. I'm not sure where everyone is at the moment, but it is still a little bit crazy at this time. So please, please, please stay safe and stay spoopy, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.